ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان سيدنا وحبيبنا وسندنا محمدا عبد الله ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وخليله خير نبي ارسله ارسله الله الى العالمين بشيرا ونذيرا اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد صلاه وسلاما دائمين متلازمين الى يوم الدين اما بعد ايها المسلمون اوصيكم ونفسي المذنبه بتقوى الله تعالى وقال الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون indeed all praises due to allah we thank him and we glorify him we seek his refuge from the evils of our own selves and from the evil of our actions whoever allah has guided none can misguide and whoever allah has left to go astray then none can guide and i bear witness that there's no lord no deity no authority worthy of worship but allah and that the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam is his last messenger In the Quran Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala chooses some people worthy of praise and emulation. Not only does he choose them and mention them, he openly declares his love for them. As such, the people that Allah openly declares his love for aren't they worthy of our own love and emulation and if we want to have an idea of what it means for allah to love someone we know from the hadith narrated by bukhari and muslim an abi hurairah radiyallahu anhu qala qala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallama inna allah idha ahabba abdan da'a jibril فقال اني احب فلانا فاحبه we know that allah said the prophet abu huraira narrated that the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that when allah loves a servant allah calls jibril and he says indeed i love so and so so love him ثم ينادي ثم ينادي في السماء قال فيحبه جبريل ثم ينادي في السماء فيقول ان الله يحب فلانا فاحبوه so as a result of allah declaring his love for this person jibril automatically follows as you know wa yaf'aluna ma yu'marun they do as they are ordered so he loves this person and then he doesn't stop there he announces in the heavens and he says Indeed Allah loves so so and so so love him and then thumma yudu lahu alqubul fi alard fa yuhibbuhu ahlu as-samaa qala thumma yudu lahu alqubul fi alard as a result of this love and this announcement every occupant of the heaven loves this person and they're granted acceptance on earth So before we start mentioning these people not only is it a good idea not only is it enough that Allah has said he loves them so they're worthy of mention because these are the kind of knowledge that 
requires action afterwards, we should ask ourselves, why bother mentioning them? Two reasons. Number one, so that we may try to be like them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees the depths of our beings, sees the depths of our intentions, and He knows when we are trying. So when we are going to mention these people that Allah loves, at the very least, we should try to be like these people. The second reason is, and this might not appear very apparent to us, is if you see someone that is either trying to be like these people or like them, then love them, right? Love these people, serve them with whatever you have, and be amongst them. Why? A person will be with the one who he loves. So if you find yourself falling short in any of these descriptions, but you see someone that many of these descriptions or some of these are present in them, then at least love them and support them and hope that by the mercy of Allah, المرؤ مع من أحب, a person will be with the one who he loves. So who are these people? The first that Allah mentions in the Quran are those who regularly repent, التوابون. Those that regularly turn back to Allah. It's interesting that this form of the verb is fa'alun form. The same form that you have for people who repeatedly do an action day in, day out. A baker in Arabic is called a khabbaz because day in, day out, he goes there, needs the, you know, bakes bread every day, takes the flour, needs the dough every day. It turns up and he does the same thing. Right? A tailor is called a khayyat because he does the same thing every time, sews regularly. So a tawab is someone that regularly, every single moment turns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And these people turn up regularly in the mornings and in the evenings. And some of these people, they look at their sins, they look at their shortcomings, and they realize that this is not what Allah requires of them, so they turn back. So if they make 10 mistakes, they turn back 10 times. If they make a hundred mistakes, they turn back a hundred times. They never lose hope in Allah because they know they have a, a Lord that has declared himself al ghafur rahim Nabbi ibadiya anniya ana al ghafur rahim Not only did he name himself the most forgiven, the most merciful, he told his beloved prophet who was sent as a mercy to tell us about this fact. He said, tell my servant, Nabbi ibadi, tell my servants that I am the most forgiven and most merciful. So this first group of people, whether it's their sins that causes them to turn back, they will always turn back. And there are some that their shortcomings, their imperfections in righteous actions call them to cause them to turn back to Allah. So that they're not necessarily people of major sins, but they look at all of the good deeds that has come from their hands and they say, this is not what Allah deserves. I only did this instead of doing this. And as a result of that imperfection, they turn back to Allah. While others look at anything that is attributed to them and realize how can I claim anything when Allah has said, وَمَا بِكُمْ مِنْ نِعْمَةٍ فَمِنَ اللَّهِ That any blessing that you have is from Allah. So this third group of people in their turning back to Allah, they do that every single time that they see anything attributed to them. They turn back to Allah. They said, Alhamdulillah wal Abdulillah. All praise belongs to Allah and even the servant belongs to Allah. So this is the first group of people. May Allah make us of those who regularly turn to Him. The second group are those who purify themselves, al mutatahhirun These people, Allah has mentioned in another part of the Quran, He said, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّاهَا Successful indeed are those who purify their souls. Purification here can be both outward and inward. We know that cleanliness is half of faith. And we know 
that there is a day where no wealth, no children shall benefit anyone except the one who comes to Allah with a sound heart, with a pure heart. So we know that those who try to purify themselves, they try to purify themselves from an outer perspective and especially from an inner perspective. Okay? And as such, these people that Allah sees their attempts to try to purify themselves, Allah declares his love for them. Allah says, Inna Allah yuhibbul tawwabina wa yuhibbul mutatahhirin. Indeed, Allah loves those who re regularly return to him and those who purify themselves. It's very important that these group of people, they might be people that outwardly you only see their sins, but you don't see their repentance. You might see the points where they fall short, but you don't see the points where they cry to Allah and say, here I am again, Ya Allah. Right? So have a good opinion of your brothers and sisters. And if you yourself fall short, remind yourself that you have a Lord that is waiting, that is willing, that is calling every day to those who have wronged themselves. As we know in the hadith, where the Prophet Muhammad said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that he descends to the seventh part of the heavens every night before Fajr. And he says, is there anyone seeking forgiveness that I may forgive? May Allah make us of those who turn regularly to him and seek to purify themselves. The third group of people are those who put their trust in Allah. Al-Mutawakkilun. Allah says, فَإِذَا عَزَمْتَ فَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْمُتَوَكِّلِينَ And when you make decisions, put your trust in Allah. Indeed, Allah loves those who put their trust in Him. These are people who act in ways that are pleasing to Allah, as He has ordered them to. And they rely completely on Allah for the results of their actions. These are people who they do what Allah has asked them to do. They act. But the result of their actions, they don't look to worldly results. They don't look to worldly ranks. They only look to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the results of their actions. These are people who in every state, in every state they're in, they have an inward tranquility knowing that Allah has got their back, knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is enough for them. And an example of this we see in the Quran, when Musa alayhi salam, he was taking his people as Allah instructed him to flee from Fir'aun. He got to a point, the river was in front of him. The enemies were behind him, the army of Fir'aun, the biggest army at that time were behind him and the river in front of him and a defenseless group of people with him. What does he do at this point? What, does his, what, do, what do his people say? They say, Inna la mudrakun. We're done, we're finished. We're going to be attacked, we're going to be finished here. What did Musa alayhi salam say? Qala kalla inna ma'i rabbi sayahdeen. He said, never, nay, no doubt. Indeed, my Lord is with me and he will guide me. And Allah guided him. Even though everything around him, the odds didn't look great, yet he put his trust in Allah. We also see with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, after the, the morning after the battle of Uhud, where they heard that the Quraysh were gathering again to finish them once and for all. And some of them were still injured from the battle. Some of them, the blood was still on their body from the battle, they were still injured. Yet they stood up and they followed the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they went out to march. And Allah described them and said, Those who, when people said to them, there's a big army that has gathered against you, so be afraid of it. Be afraid of them. 
إيمانا and it only increased them in faith. وَقَالُوا حَسْبُنَ اللَّهِ and they said Allah is sufficient for us. حَسْبُنَ اللَّهُ وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلِ Allah is sufficient for us and what an excellent person to put your trust in. What an excellent agent of trust. Right? And what happened? فَانْقَلَبُوا بِنِعْمَةٍ مِنَ اللَّهِ They returned with blessings from Allah. وَفَضْلٍ and bounty. لَمْ يَمْسَسْهُمْ سُوءٌ Not a single harm afflicted them. وَاتَّبَعُوا رِضْوَانَ اللَّهِ And they followed Allah's pleasure. وَاللَّهُ ذُو الْفَضْلِ الْعَظِيمِ And Allah is the one possessor of great bounty. So this third group are those who on the outer, the odds might look against them. But their firm faith and belief in Allah does not waver no matter what situation they're faced with. The fourth group are those who judge equitably. The muqsitun. These are those who establish justice within themselves and in their immediate environment and in society in general. Justice is a challenge that Allah challenges us to be people of justice. Allah says, Kunu qawwamina bil shuhada. Be firm witnesses of justice. Right? Be people that establish justice and witnesses to that. Walaw ala anfusikum, even if it's against your own selves. Those who establish justice within themselves, they look at what they're made up of. You have a ruh and you have a body. Do they give equal time to both when the body is for this world and only for this world and the ruh is for this world and the next? People of justice give their, what they are made up of their due rights. They know that their ruh is the virtue of what makes them human. And as such, they give their ruh what it wants, which is its connection back to its Lord. Right? And they give their body its rights because it's the vehicle that they would spend to reach Allah in this world and to serve Allah in this world. But they do not give one the rights to the detriment of the other. They establish that justice within themselves. And also within their family, they treat people equally. They never resolve any conflict or they never come to a conclusion regarding any conflict without hearing two sides of the conflict, without hearing all sides of the conflict. So they are people of justice. And also from a societal perspective, they support just institutions. They support institutes that push for justice, that push for fairness. May Allah make us people of justice and people that push and establish justice. The fifth people are those who are patient, the sabirun. These are the people of sabr. These are people who never lose focus on Allah despite the tribulations they face. These are people who recognize that Kullun min indillah. Every single thing that afflicts them is from Allah. And as such, even if they're thrown many blows and they're faced with many tribulations, their hearts don't waver and their goal, their zeal doesn't change because they see the hand behind the whip and they see that everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala places on the path of a believer. خير, as the Prophet Muhammad said, there is good in everything. And with these people, sometimes their reaction is visible. Like Allah said in the Quran that they pray to him. And sometimes their reactions is not visible. That is, they have an undying, unwavering faith in Allah in spite of all odds against them. So when Allah mentions them in Surah Al-Imran, Allah says, فَمَا وَهَنُوا لِمَا أَصَابَهُمْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ They didn't weaken regarding what afflicted them in the path of Allah. وَمَا ضَعُفُوا They did not grow weak. Right? They didn't falter in belief. They did not grow weak. Nor وَمَا اسْتَكَانُوا Nor did they abase themselves. وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الصَّابِرِينَ And Allah loves the people of patience. And Allah says, وَمَا كَانَ قَوْلَهُمُ إِلَّا أَنْ قَالُوا رَبَّنَا اغْفِرْ لَنَا ذُنُوبَنَا 
all they said in their state of weakness, in their state of being tried, was, Oh Allah, please forgive our sins. Wa israfana fi amrina, on our excesses in our actions. Wa thabbit aqdamana, and firm, make firm our, faith, our feet. Wa ansurna ala al qawmil kafirin, and guide us and help us regarding the faithless lot. Right? So these people of patience, in spite of the tribulations that they are dealt with, in spite of all of the problems that they face, they do not weaken, they do not falter, because they know Allah still has their back. And if you see people going through tribulations, the very least you can do is to try to support and to try to help and know that these are people that Allah loves. Allah says, Inna Allah yuhibbu sabirin. Right? Allah loves those who are patient. Right? May Allah make us, may Allah help us when He tests us and make us people of patience when we're tested. Which brings us to the sixth group of people. These are the people of Ihsan, the people of excellence, the virtuous ones, those who, according to the hadith, they worship Allah as though they see Allah. These people have many of the traits that we've spoken about already. But let's just mention some of the traits that Allah mentions about them in the Quran. Allah says, Those who spend in prosperity and adversity. We're all coming towards testing times for many of our neighbors and many of our fellow dwellers of this city. Allah challenges us to spend in prosperity and in adversity. Many of our neighbors, Sheikh Abdul Hakim, may Allah bless him, he mentioned to us a few weeks ago that we are in one of the most unequal, if not the most unequal city in the UK. So we know that any help that we can give to our neighbors, Allah sees it and Allah will reward it immensely. Especially when things are tough for you as well. So Allah says, Those who spend in prosperity and in adversity. And those who swallow their anger. Not that they don't get angry, but they only act in a way that's pleasing to Allah. Those who forgive others. And Allah loves those who are people of excellence. So it's clear when you read these descriptions that like these people operate on a different platform. Their dealings with their fellow human beings is like they're dealing directly with Allah. As the Prophet Muhammad said, that Ihsan is that you worship Allah as though you see Him. So these people in dealing with every single human being, they deal with them first as if they're dealing with Allah. They ask themselves, what does Allah demand of me in this state? What does Allah want me to do when my neighbor is hungry? What does Allah want me to do when my neighbor has just lost their job? Or when people around me can't even afford a meal for a day? Okay, so will we rise up to this challenge? Will we spend in adversity? And will we at least try to emulate these people of excellence so that Allah may look at us and say, maybe because of our emulation, he counts us as one of them. The last people, the last group of people are the people of taqwa, al-muttaqoon. The people who are God-conscious, God-focused. Some scholars have described taqwa as following. They said, imtithalul awamir which is to do everything that Allah has asked us to do. nawahi, And to keep away from everything that Allah has asked us to keep away from. Openly and when people don't see us and hidden. Right? In the open and in secret. Kama yuridul haqqu, la kama turidu. As Allah wants, not as you want. So these people are totally committed to Allah. 
Their focus is Allah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Taqwa is one of the reasons of creation. Right? Allah says, Ya ayyuhan nasu abudu rabbakum alladhi khalaqakum wa alladhina min qablikum la'allakum tattaqun. O mankind, worship your Lord, the one that created you and the ones before you, so that you may attain God consciousness. It's also one of the main reasons of Ramadan, because Allah asks us to fast. He said, fasting has been prescribed for you, as it was prescribed for those before you, so that you may attain taqwa. And what Allah has promised people of taqwa is numerous in the Quran. The people who are God conscious, right? Whoever wants to be protected from enemies, Allah says, وَإِن تَصْبِرُوا وَتَتَّقُوا لَا يَضُرُّكُمْ كَيْدُهُمْ شَيْئًا If you are patient and you have God consciousness, none of their harm will afflict you. Whoever wants, whoever wants to be saved from difficult times, he should hold on to taqwa. Because Allah says, وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا Whoever is God conscious, Allah would always provide a way out for them and He will give them provisions from where they do not expect. Whoever wants that their sins should be forgiven and for their actions to be rectified, they should hold on to taqwa. Because Allah says, Ya amanu wa qawlan sadida yuslih lakumu a'malakum wa yaghfir lakum dhunubakum. O oh, you who believe, be God conscious and speak righteous, speak upward, speak in a right way. If you do this, yuslih lakumu a'malakum. He'll rectify your actions. وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ And he will forgive all your shortcomings. Right? Whoever wants that Allah should accept from them, that Allah should accept their actions, then they should hold on to taqwa. Because Allah said, إِنَّمَا يَتَقَبَّلُ اللَّهُ مِنَ الْمُتَّقِينَ Allah will only accept from the people of taqwa. We ask Allah to accept from us all. We ask Allah to make us people of taqwa. We ask Allah to overlook all our shortcomings. And as a gentle reminder to myself and everyone, why have we mentioned these people? We've mentioned them for two main reasons. One, so that we can try to emulate them and to be like them. If we're not there yet, then we have a target that we're aiming for. And the second reason is when you see people that are trying to be like these people, be with them, love them, serve them, and perhaps Allah would join us with them. الحمد لله الذي بنعمته تتم الصالحات ثم الصلاة والسلام على سيد السادات دليل الخيرات سيد الأولين والآخرين إمام الأولياء والمتقين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين عباد الله اعلموا أن الله أمركم بأمر عظيم بدأ, بدأ فيه بنفسه وثن بالملائكته القدس وثلث بالمؤمنين من جنه وإنسه فقال الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد الفاتح لما أغلق والخاتم لما سبق ناصر الحق بالحق والهادي إلى صراطك المستقيم وعلى آله حق قدره ومقداره العظيم اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات برحمتك يا مجيب الدعوات اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم إنا نسألك حبك 
wa hubba nabiyyik wa hubba man yuhibbuk wa hubba amalin salihin yuqarribuna ila hubbika ya arhamar rahimin Allahumma arzuqna hubbaka ya arhamar rahimin Allahumma ahshurna ma'al muhibbina ya arhamar rahimin Rabbana ati nufusana taqwaaha wa zakkiha anta khayru man zakkaaha anta waliyuha wa anta maulaha Allahumma ansur li ikhwanana al mustadda'afina al mazlumina fi kulli makan Allahumma اللهم يسر لإخواننا المستضعفين في باكستان اللهم يسر لإخواننا المستضعفين في كل مكان يا أرحم الراحمين يا أرحم الراحمين يا أرحم الراحمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القرب وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله العظيم يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون أقيم الصلاه